Hello, Céline. The war in Ukraine has been going on for over three months now, and it has also taken a toll on global food supply chains, as both Russia and Ukraine are major commodity exporters. Let's dive some deeper into uh, this problem. Céline Boulanger, you're a macroeconomist at De Grof Peterkam. Are we heading for a food catastrophe? How important are Russia and Ukraine for global food supplies? They're very important. They're both uh, major food exporters. Um, and a lot of countries rely on Russia and Ukraine for the food that they consume. 30 countries around the world rely on Russia and Ukraine for 30% of their wheat imports. And for some countries like Egypt or Libya, two thirds of the cereals they import come from Russia and Ukraine. So of course the war has a major impact on uh, global food production through uh, shortages in supply, which disrupted global uh, food supply chains, led to a surge in prices, and this has major implications for emerging markets. Um, and the situation is only going to get worse because many countries are imposing strict restrictions on food exports. And actually, the number of people who cannot be sure to get enough to eat has now risen to 1.6 billion. The the war start this food crisis or were there already vulnerabilities prior to the conflict? The war is just one piece of the puzzle. Actually, the World Food Programme announced uh, before the war that 2022 was going to be a terrible year. Um, this is mostly because of climate change. So in China, rain uh, delayed planting. In India, Extreme temperatures hurt uh, crop yields in the US, in Europe, um, across Africa. Droughts have been the problem. So climate change was already hurting food production around the world way before uh, the war hit. And on top of that, the world was facing a major energy shock. Um, energy prices had already gone up quite a bit. Uh, this was only made worse by the war, but that means that the cost of producing food um, had already gone up. Uh, fertilizer prices had gone up as well. Which countries are now most likely to be affected by food shortages? These are, of course, countries uh, which rely heavily on wheat for uh, the food that households consume. Um, mostly countries in the Middle East and North Africa. Egypt, for example, is the largest um, buyer of wheat in the world, but also Tunisia, Lebanon, um, Turkey is quite vulnerable as well, uh, not only because it relies heavily on Russia and Ukraine uh, for the wheat it imports, but also because it's a major oil importer. Um, and the situation, economically speaking, in Turkey has been quite unstable for some time. Inflation hit 73% last month, and we know the government doesn't want to use uh, restrictive monetary policy to fight inflation. So instability there means that Turkey is quite vulnerable. Uh, there's also those countries uh, where households spend a large proportion of their incomes on food. These are mostly sub-Saharan uh, African countries uh, where 40% of households' budgets go to food. Uh, so they are quite vulnerable as well. And what's more, um, in those countries where uh, food is a major import, they also tend to be major importers of oil. So for those countries, the cost of living crisis is twofold. Do you think this could give rise to social unrest in certain countries? Of course, this reminds us a little bit of the Arab Spring of 2011. Um, we know at the time that rising food prices played a role in the uprisings. Um, in 20, uh, 2007 and 2008, uh, food prices uh, surged, mostly grain prices. This had a major impact on uh, Arab countries. In Egypt, for example, inflation reached uh, close to 20%. Um, this uh, hurt the population by rising poverty levels, uh, also rising unemployment, uh, and the government didn't do enough um, to reduce the burden of rising food inflation on in households, so that led to discontent among the population, and it was one of the catalysts uh, for the uprisings a few years later. Um, today, the situation is quite worrisome as well. Um, we know that food insecurity can lead to social unrest. Actually, we're seeing in 
uh, Sri Lanka that food shortages and rising prices can lead to major economic crises and also uh, social unrest. But what can authorities do in order to reduce the impact of rising food prices for households? Of course, individual governments um, have been using uh, food subsidies to try and reduce the burden on households. This is tricky because these are countries um, where public finances tend to be um, quite shaky. Uh, so they're facing dilemmas there. Um, but mostly countries need to uh, stick together, keep markets open, because imposing uh, bans on exports only makes the situation worse. But also finding solutions to help the most vulnerable countries, um, solutions like debt relief, for example. Uh, but we really need to try to avoid another surge in poverty, especially as this is happening um, right after two years of a major pandemic, which already led to a surge in poverty across, across the globe. Céline Boulanger, thank you for sharing your insights, a story to be continued. Thank you so much.